Hello, guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. I got Mr. Nini in my shirt. He's uh, taking a nap. And um, today we're going to be talking about Earthshifter. So Earthshifter was a request by one of my viewers. Uh, a lot of my videos are requests, actually. If you guys have any requests, feel free to put them down in the comments because uh, I usually will go over every item that I can. I do keep in mind that sometimes, though, I have a difficulty getting my hands on the items themselves. Uh, one such item that I'm having trouble getting my hands on is a uh, Shadow Killer. Um, I didn't realize I didn't have the file for Shadow Killer, uh, but I don't. <laughs> I also don't have the file for Torch of Eero. If anybody has a Torch of Eero laying around, I could use one. Um, Earthshifter Thunder Maul is an elite tier item. It is uh, a very high level item, and, uh, and it is unfortunately a very high strength item. Uh, with a strength requirement of 253, you are definitely going to have some issues wielding this on a character. Um, it does have some very nice damage, though, of 132 to 720. And the ethereal version has 196 to 1080. Very, very high damage. Um, it also has some interesting effects on it, and we're going to go over those. So right off the bat, you'll notice that um, it has a fast attack speed. And, um, and that is simply because I am a, a druid. Uh, druids have relatively faster attack speed with 200 two-handed items. This is actually a very slow class item. And if you look at this item on a non-druid, um, you're probably going to see a much slower speed. Um, it does have 25% chance to cast level 14 Fissure on attack. And Fissure is actually a pretty decent AoE skill. Um, it's not a very good single target skill, but it's pretty good AoE. And uh, and basically it's a whole bunch of little fire effects that come out the target. And, uh, and at level 14, we have a damage of 129 to 139 fire damage in an AoE pattern. And uh, it's a 25% chance to cast, which is relatively high. Which does mean that it's going to proc relatively all the time. Uh, like, let's just say, relatively all the time. And, uh, and and we're gonna go out. We're, we'll test it in a little bit, and we'll, we'll play around with it. But uh, but for right now, just take my word for it. It's gonna be a lot. Um, Fissure can also be synergized uh, with its particular synergies. So if you look at Fissure, uh, Fissure has a uh, very nice uh, synergy bonus from Firestorm and Volcano. Um, so we are looking at two Fissure uh, Synergy bonuses. If we were to max out, for instance, uh, Firestorm, and we were also to max out uh, Volcano, um, we would have a very nice uh, plus 12% per level. Um, so we can run this on the calculator real quick because I know I'm terrible at quick math. And um, so we got 12% uh, and 12%, which is 24%. So 24 times 20, which is you can only get hard point synergies. So we're looking at a bonus damage of 480%, uh, which means that our 129 to 139 is going to be a hell of a lot more than that. Now we can take an average damage between the two because obviously there's a 10 point variance between the bottom and the top numbers. So uh, if we, for instance, take somewhere right in the middle, which would be like 126, and then we add plus 480%, uh, we would get a very nice fissure damage of 730.8, which is not bad at all. Um, 730.8 fissure damage is uh, is actually pretty sweet considering it's a very nice AoE effect. Um, if you've never used fissure before, um, I will play around with it later. Um, we also have some other nice effects on here, like plus 7 to elemental skills. Now, unfortunately, the plus 7 to elemental skills will not help your actual... Um, synergies or anything. So unless you are a druid who is casting the abilities, um, you are not going to get any bonus from that. And and why am I saying that specifically like that? Well, um, one of the ways that this could be extremely useful is as a Fireclaw Druid. Uh, Fireclaw Druids do build fire abilities. They do build Firestorm. Um, and, uh, and those synergies could work very well to allow you to spam Fissure. Um, you could build this particular weapon with this particular build very nicely. But the unfortunate side effect of this is, is that that plus 7 to elemental skills is essentially wasted. Uh, because the Firestorm is incapable of being used while in werewolf or bear form. Um, let's, uh, let's go with a bear. So let's just go ahead and put some points in here. 
Uh, actually, we already have level 31 werewolf, don't we? Uh, I guess we'll go with werewolf. Um, so while you are in werewolf form, you notice you cannot cast Firestorm, you cannot cast Molten Boulder, you cannot cast Fissure, you cannot cast Volcano. So those plus seven to skills while you're in the Fire Claw Druid form are relatively useless. Um, the only thing that you can cast while you are in werewolf form or bear form is the Armageddon. So if I were to build a Armageddon werewolf or Armageddon bear, which is not really a very good skill. They have upgraded it a little bit and increased the intensity of the fire. Of course, these monsters here are immune to fire. Let me uh, let me go to a, a place where they don't have immune to fire monsters, shall I? And uh, also, let me give myself a... Mr. Nini wants to go back in the shirt. Uh, also, let me give myself an attack skill, too. I don't know if I actually gave myself an attack skill. Let's do uh, Fury. Um, so as you can see here, it works something like this. You would cast your Armageddon, and then you would come in here, and you would spam your weapon, and you would do pretty nice damage like this. Um, as you can see, it doesn't attack that slowly uh, because it is a werewolf, and werewolves do get a nice attack speed bonus. They also get a relatively nice bonus from the uh, the fact that it's a two-handed weapon. Um, there are some some nice changes in the public test realm, by the way. This is 2.4 public test realm, and, uh, and that's why I'm showing off the item here because I wanted to show off the druid item in a uh, more, you know, up-to-date fashion. Of course, I don't think I put any points into vitality. I have 565 points in a strength, and I have a whole 420. I have a whole 420 HP. Apparently, I'm blazing. Um, so basically, when it comes to this particular weapon, um, the plus seven to elemental skills is not really going to help you very much, unless you're going to build Armageddon. Um, and that's kind of really odd, because you would think that plus 7 to freaking elemental skills would be so amazing, but it's not unless you're actually going to be a caster druid. So if you are a caster fire druid, or if you are a caster uh, hurricane druid, or something along those lines, it could be a lot more useful. Now, there are some other ideas that you could potentially use this for, because of course it's not just fire skills, it's elemental skills. So it also gives you a bonus to your Cyclone Armor. It's also going to give you a very nice bonus to Hurricane. Um, both of these can be cast now while in Druid, uh, your werewolf form. Uh, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but let me go ahead and reset my character real quick. I um, just wanted to show you that they can be cast in this form now, which is pretty cool. Um, this is something that they changed in 2.4, and it will be available on April 14th when they uh, come out with 2.4, so be prepared for that. And as you can see, I can now cast Cyclone Armor while in this mode. I could also cast Hurricane while in this mode. So um, this would give you a very nice plus 7 to Cyclone Armor and a nice plus 7 to Hurricane, which can both be cast while in this, in this form. Um, and, uh, and it could potentially be a very interesting setup. Um, you could build, for instance, um, Cyclone Armor, Hurricane, maybe Firestorm, and Fissure. And you would have a very nice, um, interesting combination of perhaps uh, physical damage from Twister procs, uh, Firestorm damage, or sorry, Fissure damage from the, from the Fissure procs, and then you'd have the cold damage from the Hurricane as well. So it would be a very nice multi-elemental build. Um, now, in keeping with how this particular item is designed, um, they really designed it specifically around a elemental druid character. Um, it definitely seems like for some reason or another, they wanted this to be used on a elemental druid. Um, it has plus seven elemental skills. It even has plus 10% faster cast. Um, so they kind of thought about the elemental druid needing the ability to cast faster. However, it's a two-handed weapon. It takes up the shield slot. And quite honestly, it absolutely ruins your faster cast for what, 10%? I mean, I could be using um, a, a Heart of the Oak and a Spirit. I could be using, uh, you know, a, a myriad of other items. that give me far more faster cast than what this item is capable of giving me. Um, so it's a little odd that they decided to only go with 10% faster cast. Um, it also gives you 10% increased attack speed, which is welcome because the Thunder Maul is a relatively slow weapon. Um, we also have 33% chance of crushing blow. 
So again, it seems like they designed this around the idea of a elemental druid slash attack druid. But the thing is, is that druid doesn't have any attack skills um, outside of werewolf and bear. So if you're not a werewolf and you're not a bear, there's no way for you to get any damage. Um, I don't really understand why they decided to kind of like mix together this genre, but there are some interesting builds that could come out of this. We also have a level 14 volcano uh, charges on this, which could potentially be used. But if you were a fire druid, why would you need volcano charges? You could just cast your own volcano, right? Um, we also have a 50% damage to undead, of course, because it is also a, uh, a mall class. Now, that is off-weapon ED, and it does not function the same as the on-weapon ED, so do keep that in mind. And um, the... The ED on this particular item, the enhanced damage, does vary. It is a 300% at max and 250% at minimum, so it is a 50% variable. Now, for this particular item, especially if you were to put a Zod rune in an ethereal version, I would recommend that you find a 300%. Um, speaking of the ethereal version, um, this is the ethereal version here at 196 to 1080, which is pretty massive. Um, the Ethereal version also has the benefit of having the 243 strength requirement instead of the 253 strength requirement. If you're unaware, all Ethereal items have 10 less on the requirements. Uh, they're also worth 50% less gold, by the way. Um, but however, to use this particular item, you would have to put a Zod rune in it. So if you wanted to use a Earth Shifter Thunder Maul, you're going to have to find a Zod rune or... Or trade for a Zod rune. Um, however you you get one, it doesn't really matter. Um, even if you're buying it off some sort of website. I mean, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. But to use this item, you're going to have to put a Zod rune in it to make it indestructible. And I thought I had one laying around, but I guess not. Now, is this a best-in-slot item? Um, is this something that you could potentially use on a character, you know, um, in Hell difficulty? Yes, it is. Uh, a item that you could use in a hell difficulty character but no it's not a best at slot item um, there are builds that you can do around this item as i have displayed um, you can build the synergies for the fissure so that you have the fissure proccing on a regular basis um, it does a pretty massive amount of physical damage you could combine it with hurricane you can combine it with cyclone armor um, it definitely seems like you would need to utilize this on a werewolf or a bear i feel like that's the best way to utilize this uh, probably a fire claws bear um, or a, um, a Frenzy, um, like I'm, I'm messing up the uh, skills, a Fury, Bob, Fury Werewolf, or maybe even a uh, Feral Rage or Maul Werebear. Um, there are a lot of different ways that you could potentially build this elemental damage skill. Um, the moral of the story with this, though, is that uh, is you probably want to attack fast, because the faster you attack, the more procs of Fissure that you would have procking. Um, the Crushing Blow, 33% Crushing Blow is also going to be very nice for that. And I don't know if I went over Crushing Blow, but 33% Crushing Blow is a 33% chance to deal 25% damage to the monster's uh, current HP, not their maximum. And, uh, and that is a very, very nice effect. Um, it does do only 12.5% to bosses and 10% to uh, PvP players. Um, crushing Blow is absolutely amazing because it just takes off huge swaths of damage. Um, and when you think about it, you've really got a lot going on here with this weapon. You have 33% crushing blow, which is amazing. Um, you have a, a huge bonus to your elemental skills, which could be handy for uh, Cyclone Armor, Hurricane, and Armageddon. Um, you also have an increased attack speed and increased faster cast, which could be mildly helpful in a build like this, um, as well as a massive amount of physical damage, which is certainly going to be very helpful um, if you are a werewolf or bear. And then on top of that, we have a spamming fissure attack, which is an AoE, by the way, and that AoE is going to be a constant thorn in the side of whoever is, uh, is being attacked by it. I mean, if I am a, uh, a werewolf, let's just go ahead and throw some points into uh, into Fury real quick. And let's go play around on this with a werewolf. Because I want you guys to see what kind of damage you could potentially output uh, with something like this. So we're going to build the synergies again for Fissure. So we need Firestorm and Volcano. We do not need Fissure, by the way. We only need Firestorm and Volcano to make this work. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, Fury on here. The 
course these guys are skeletons and I can't lifesteal from them. <laughs> Which is always the absolute best monsters to fight when you're trying to show something off. Let me, um, let me go very quickly grab myself some potions, shall I? Alright. Hey look, some more immune to fire monsters. Let me take my, uh, my torch off. I want you to see the, um, I want you to actually see the fire procs. I don't want you to see me. Actually, uh, let me pick my torch back up. I'm going to go somewhere where there's not a bunch of fire demons. I was hoping for the cold monsters here. Uh, but I did not get the cold monsters. I got the fire monsters, which is not what I wanted. Every single time I want something, they give me the opposite. They just keep pulling me back in. As you can see, the fissure is this very nice um, damage on the floor. And it does hit a large number of targets, and it hits them multiple times. So that damage that we were talking about earlier, the 730 some odd damage that the Firestorm proc is doing, is a lot more than you think, because it is constantly hitting the ghosts for the duration of the Firestorm proc. And it also procs multiple times, which means it stacks underneath the target, and it can do relatively nice damage. Now, of course, the main downside to it is that it's fire damage. And, of course, fire damage um, is a an issue. There are a lot of fire reviewed monsters in Hell Difficulty. But in this particular build, you are probably not going to be worried about that. You have a relatively high amount of physical damage. You have a relatively high amount of elemental damage. You have fire. Um, you can build either into the, uh, obviously, you can do fury. You could do fire claws. Um, you could put a shale rune in this to make it faster. Um, there are a lot of different ways that you could potentially build this particular character. Um, and I, I feel like Firestorm is just an absolutely amazing ability for AoE kills. Um, I think you will notice, or rather, uh, am I talking about Firestorm or fi Fissure? Fissure is an absolutely amazing ability for AoE kills because you will notice that it does a massive amount of damage to all the targets nearby. Um, at any monster that gets within the radius of the, of, the, uh, of the effect is going to be hit multiple times over and over again. Now, there is some downsides to um, the Fissure ability, and that is that when you are in restricted zones, like, for instance, Arcane Sanctuary, um, you can find yourself in, uh, in a, a very odd predicament where your ability doesn't really quite go off like it's supposed to. Uh, because it is a ground-based ability, um, you will notice that it has to have ground underneath of it. And, uh, and if it doesn't have any ground underneath of it, it doesn't work particularly well. Um, sometimes it will just not spawn in that particular zone, and sometimes it will, all of them will spawn in that particular zone. So it's, uh, it's a little random. Now, I think we've talked enough about this particular item. It is a very interesting item. Um, you could totally build an entire character around this item if you wanted to, and that is kind of the fun thing about Diablo. But uh, the question is, is where would you potentially find this item? if you wanted to find one, right? So uh, so that's what we're going to be doing right now is we're going to go over and we're going to take a look and see where we could potentially find a Earth Shifter Thunderball. Uh, so we are going to assume that since this is a relatively high-level item, that we are probably a relatively high-level character. So let's assume 400% uh, magic find, which is a pretty good number. Um, if you are level 69 or higher and you're searching for the uh, Earth Shifter Thundermall, you're probably a well-geared magic-finding character. Um, let's also assume that uh, we're going to be hunting bosses, and, uh, and you will notice that there's not a lot of drop probabilities here. Um, even with 400% chance, um, a Bale kill is 1 in 29,806. It's a fairly rare item. Um, Neil Thack is 1 in 227,000. Uh, that is lottery numbers there like literally when you go uh, and try and do lottery you know buy lottery tickets and you look at the the chances of winning that's like that's like the chances of winning for a lottery ticket um, we also have uh, monsters that you could potentially farm but not a very large number of them again uh, thresh socket frozen stein pindle skin snap chip shatter uh, sharp tooth slayer doc Farron, akmel the curse bartek the bloody cleanse of the united Alyssa the tormentor ventar the unholy and neolithic um, it does look like Thresh Socket is a pretty good choice. 
Um, so if you haven't ever farmed Thresh Socket before, uh, Thresh Socket is at the end of Frigid Highlands. Um, he's relatively easy to get to. So what you do is you go to Frigid Highlands and usually you kill Eldritch on the way because he's standing right there. Um, and at the end of Frigid Highlands, before you get to the next zone, uh, Thresh Socket is always guarding the stairs that goes up to the next zone. Uh, Pindleskin is also one that you could farm, but he has uh, pretty much double the um, probability of Thresh Socket, which is certainly not a good chance. Uh, but of course, you could kill Pindle and then go kill Thresh Socket, which is a pretty good combo there. Uh, Doc Farron is a really terrible chance, but you can also kill him. Um, Doc Farron is in the middle of, uh, of the siege zone, uh, which is, uh, he's not like too difficult to get to. Uh, but for the most part here, what you're noticing is that there's not a lot of monsters that drop this item because it is particularly a rare item. Um, and keep that in mind. Um, because if you do happen to find yourself in Earth Shifter uh, Thunder Mall, um, you found yourself something that's kind of a rare object. Uh, something you might want to hang on to as a trophy, perhaps. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, um, especially when I am shifting the Earth. And... Uh, Keep watching.